And on the other hand, if we're speaking about counterterrorism and extremism, we can analyze the manifestations of extremist uh, crimes, uh, offenses, and we can assess the activity of the law enforcement agencies on identifying on uh, the investigation and to the prevention of these activities. So this is actually what again can see from these additional approaches. Well, it works very efficiently. As for the criminal activity related to extremism, at the moment, we can note the following. Extremist movements all the time evolve and change depending on the economic, political and social situation, depending on the foreign policy of the states. And today we heard a lot how the extremist activity would change amid the COVID-19 and amid the situation at hand. Next, religious extremism, which also accelerates amid the lockdown. So the criminal networks and sects go online as well. For instance, witnesses of Jehovah uh, are on the rise, they are prohibited uh, there, and uh, emit these and situational approach gives uh, a lot of field for the cooperation between the police of different nations. There are such uncovered uh, forms of extremism which are uh, when we speak about the blue whales, uh, meaning that uh, that uh, the teenagers were prompted to commit suicide, it can be identified as extremism. The same is true of today. The League of Safe Internet, Katerina Mizulina, for instance, commented on that, uh, commented on the Kalmar game. All these trends uh, are propagated in TikTok, and uh, children replicate that, and tragedies uh, occur, and therefore we have uh, then to address uh, suicides. I think that end of the day, this is again a situation which requires its uh, consideration, its evaluation, and the criminologists uh, who identify crimes, who solve crimes, who use the criminal norms, they have to take a proactive approach rather than react and consider these situations as a, a challenge for the scientific research. And I'd like to, I actually will uh, highlight uh, in more detail my main article, but uh, what I may tell you about the citizen's approach to prevent uh, extremism. We are doing that. And there is a methodological center or methodological support for the prevention and countering of terrorism and extremism. And for many years, we have accumulated a certain experience. First of all, more than one, so we held an interdepartmental scientific seminars and conference in particular. We held such seminars with sociologists, with philosophers, which actually allows us to provide for the interdisciplinary approach. And hence, we have very interesting achievements and developments. We are using the practical experience of our workers. We invite uh, the prosecutors, the offices of the Center for Preventing Terrorism and Ter Extremism to share some information. There are certain options how to prove a crime, and we try to elaborate a typology, how to bring about evidence, how to prove the crimes, especially the ones which took place online on the internet. We held very interesting workshops involving practitioners. That means that we have a very interesting experience of us creating multimedia products. We're doing that for more than five years, and at the time when the World Cup was held and Kalingrad was one of the house cities, our developments were used practically, and we worked to prevent uh, extremism and uh, other such encroachments. There is another experience when we are doing certain courses, when organizing certain courses. 
And we have uh, worked out some specialized programs and run into the following interesting thing several years ago. We developed a program for the comprehensive school teachers uh, and for the university professors. And after that, we were approached by representatives of uh, culture, actors of culture, Ministry of Social Development, Ministry of Healthcare for us to share our programs. But citational approach is very important. In any citation, you may identify certain elements. And these programs have to be developed first and foremost, uh, depending on the target audience who this program is aimed at, for instance, for school children. We would be doing different programs, such as for the students and for those who already were involved in such an activity. Where, for instance, in class, there are students who would be engaged in extremist activity and they may influence such uh, students. So uh, it implies totally different uh, progress. Moreover, we did training for the adults, uh, for the municipal officers, uh, civil servants, and we use totally different methods for them. And this uh, approach should embrace different methodologies, different content of this program, depending on whether you're working with the students of the universities, even the would-be lawyers implies one program, but the students of different uh, uh, profession, you have to use a total different approach. And we have a program for the teachers, for the professors. I think that such a center does have an interesting piece of work. And Mr. Avakian organizes that work very well, and we enjoyed several grants, and he underwent several foreign internships, and probably he will comment on the results that we may obtain. The practice showed that within five years, the center employs the staff, the fellows of our chair, and we also make some recommendations for the prosecutors for it is whether this content uh, contains extremist materials or not. We do such uh, uh, expert opinions. And uh, it has a very good feedback. Thank you so much. I run out of time. And uh, Mr. Avakian, probably you will comment on that in terms of the practice. Thank you so much for your contribution, uh, Tatiana. And we have time for Quinta as well. So probably you have some questions to the speaker and you can ask them on the chat box and you can spell that out. Are there any questions? Let us listen to other speakers. Once there are no questions, yes, probably it makes sense uh, to organize the session end of the session. Okay. Thank you, Valeri. So end of the session will allocate some time for the session and sure. I will dedicate some time for myself. Should we have some time for that, for comments? And so that I would like to pass the floor to the PhD in history, director of the Center for Islamic Studies, Academy of Sciences of the Republic of Tatarstan, Ishat Muhammad Zaripov. He'll speak about the European and North American experience in using visual materials to counter xenophobia and violence. As a uh, scientists, I'm very much interested in that. Uh, can you hear us, uh, Mr. Mohamed Jaripov? Yes, dear moderator, can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. I can hear you very well. I'd like to share my screen. Can you see my slides? Well, now we see your presentation and we can see it very well. Okay.
слайд, да. Угу. Так, а, ну, сразу бы хотелось отметить, что... I'd like to note immediately that one of the topical ideas is to bring about upbringing, which results in tolerant our behavior, respecting rights of others, uh, following rules, uh, critical thinking, empathy, and a negative attitude towards violence, psychological and physical, personal responsibility, uh, recognition of uh, diversity, etc. The bringing component may be implemented not only through different social institutions, including school and family, but also by means uh, offer uh, certain measures that we take and the environment has to bring up greatness to the atmosphere and raise public awareness. Uh, there are diverse uh, visuals uh, which can be used for that uh, posters, pictures, uh, leaflets and other materials in order to build up an information system in order to um, somehow foster the models which are appropriate uh, in the eyes of the society and the state. The state, along with the NGOs, are interested in the raising of awareness on tolerance, freedom and democracy, and uh, different um, critical thinking as well as uh, the uh, digital skills. Uh, therefore, any types of discrimination recognize have to be condemned, but positive alternatives have to be offered. You'd rather do like that or act like that. Doing that is good. An important thing is to select the right message, which would cause positive uh, image. Um, uh, text has to be complemented because the text material very often, what we see in Russia, not only just in Russia, but abroad as well, without certain visuals, with the text which is overloaded with words, uh, is not perceived very well by the youth and can be perceived as another lecturing. Saying that, in order to study the practices and the generalization with the comparative analysis, we select a certain visuals which are disseminated in Europe and in the United States in particular. In terms of content, uh, we may identify several types of such materials, the warning and the banning ones, uh, which can be boiled down to it's prohibited, uh, be cautious, uh, explanatory ones, what it is, and there are combined uh, uh, visuals which uh, would uh, illustrate the appropriate behavior. For instance, uh, Christoph Neman from New York Times uh, offered this cartoon for the contest uh, held by South African actors. He offered such a poster against xenophobia. On the one hand, this is quite uh, simple, but at the same time, uh, it's uh, quite illustrative. You see a face of a person, and uh, actually one tooth is knocking other teeth out. Uh, it performed very well. And uh, actually, it rams this anti-racist message home. And so this is all achieved through using this imagery and closeness to the lives of the observer, because people all can lose teeth, and this is all well perceived, close to one's heart by the viewers. Another example is the work by a Canadian artist, Elise Cravel. She chose the comics run. She's showing these uh, funny monsters to explain what it means to feel empathy, danger of racism, what means love, and how to act against bullying. Because uh, bullying is very closely related to radicalization of youths. A young person, as a result of bullying, can uh, choose a radical ideology to justify his actions. Uh, one page comics, cartoons, easy to read off uh, a smartphone or to print out and use as a poster at school or in other organizations and use them as uh, part of brochures. 
or collections. Not just these comics, but uh, other art can be used. Uh, there's also work by Tom Gold from Scotland. He's using short strip comics to explain xenophobia and intolerance. So this uh, comic is about uh, visiting a, an exhibit. Some people are happy with the negative uh, pictures of others, but uh, is then really upset when uh, he sees himself in the image. The next piece is by Margrethe Brihier from Holland. She works with the United Nations and the Dutch government. She has been producing such uh, street cartoons uh, for years about philosophy, religion, science. And yet she's uh, talking about such issues as violence, uh, observance of laws, political correctness and others. Moving on, this is uh, no longer a street cartoon or a comic. These are posters that were published on uh, public transport. The campaign called My Jihad. It was carried out in a number of US cities in New York City and in Boston, for example, at the initiative of local authorities and uh, Muslim activists. The goal was to change the migrants and the locals' attitude towards the term of jihad and improve uh, communication between uh, various communities by using this type of um, advertising on public transport. The topic of jihad is uh, multifaceted, has many meanings, and this demonstrates various uh, meanings of the word, such as building good relations with uh, representatives of other cultures, races, and ethnicities. On top of that, in Boston in particular, what you can see on the right-hand side, uh, this is one uh, example of uh, visual materials, a comprehensive material that uh, formulates and shapes uh, behavior. This is a poster against Islamophobic harassment, which shows you what to do when, when you are confronted with anti-Muslim uh, verbal harassment. And so the recommendation was to uh, provide help to the victim and ignore the aggressor. That's one of the options I wanted to show you. Further, an interesting approach was used by Rachel Gingrich or Gingrich from New York City in 2020. Uh, in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic, she decided to use this to remind people that all people are people and you need to fight the virus, the infection, not each other. And she created this uh, series of posters that were posted in New York and on social media, calling on people to unite against the threat of the disease and stop fighting with each other. In terms of uh, visualization and the text legend, these works of art are optimal. They are memorable, catchy, they uh, are very substantive and they resonate with people. There are other examples from Europe, for example. Let's take Switzerland. St. Gallen or St. Helen, uh, Canton, the International Day Against Racism in July of 2020. These are the posters used by the Swiss to fight uh, ignorance, bigotry, and aggression against migrants. And uh, the one on the left is a dialogue typical dialogue between the local and the migrant minority. And one is asking the other, where you come? I'm from the city in Switzerland. And the local is asking, are you sure you're from that city? So his ethnicity is emphasized. And these are the dialogues who are designed to show that they are senseless. And therefore, they were fighting stereotypes using these posters. And text will say that locals think that I sell drugs. As an example, in Germany, they used uh, some more interesting materials even. Uh, take these, for example, in 2013, Morgan Stern advertising company developed this poster that showed the value of cultural diversity through a picture of traditional pastries in Germany. Germany without diversity as stolen without raisins. 
and Germany without uh, diversity as uh, Tim Stern without cinnamon. So this is simple, but yet it makes you think tangentially, not directly. Further on, these are the leaflets by a food organization, a non-profit organization, uh, Tafilm, that uh, provides help to migrants and uh, low-income people since 1993, including help to refugees and asylum seekers. And uh, they also make uh, posters and leaflets against extremism and xenophobia. And here, slogan is here. We are well. We welcome everyone who respects others. Very simple. And you do a social work and distribute those leaflets at the same time. That's how it works. Another important point is that in German schools, they use posters against bullying, and uh, the family ministry, the youth ministry, is uh, distributing, disseminating these leaflets on how to help someone who's suffering from depression with a number of uh, services that can help. The objective of these materials, this is an example, is to uh, shape uh, certain behavior models uh, that would uh, stimulate feedback and communication with uh, children and uh, teenagers. Another example is from the UK, 2015. They, they launched this campaign, I'm an immigrant, and everyone could enter this site on the internet, make a poster with his picture, his profession, uh, his occupation, his image. And then they would be put uh, in various locations on the subway in uh, London and at uh, some uh, rail stations in the UK. Everything is uh, very ingenious. Uh, people just had to make them. They needed to ensure that the text was okay with authorities to prevent someone from using them in negative for negative purposes. But uh, the idea was to diminish the social distance between the native population and the migrants. And in conclusion, I wanted to mention that all these uh, materials are not the main, but rather an auxiliary means of um, character development of the younger population. They could be used on their own or become uh, the foundation from brochures or brochures, uh, video clips and books. They can be printed or disseminated electronically in the digital space. But the main issue is, of course, still both in our country, is uh, finding the right performers who have the right skills and talent to create um, images that are interesting for the youths and uh, catchy slogans. Sometimes people can do this um, formally. You just need to develop some agitation material and uh, you don't really pay much heed to what's going to be depicted there without too much text added to the, or too much text added to the image. Another problem is that you have to select carefully who you are targeting with these materials based on the topic and the format of delivery. And yet, it is uh, important to increase the number of such materials that would create positive images and patterns of behavior amongst the youths. And again, not just through the materials that we've just described, that things are banned or forbidden, but rather through those that instill some positive behavior with the optimal combination of uh, graphics and text. Uh, the materials should not just uh, be limited to using text uh, theory and statistics. Infographics are good, of course, especially for the older people, not the children. And this is something that helps develop critical thinking. And yeah, this is just part of what needs to be done. And all of these materials should uh, affect people's emotions, uh, stir up certain uh, emotions and uh, cause a cause some feedback thank you very much i hope i made it within the time limit allotted to me thank you very much ilshat 
for this uh, informative and very illustrative uh, speech. It was quite interesting, quite educational, I would say. The organizers are telling me that uh, we are not going to have the third presenter, Mr. Babushkin. Therefore, we can... Uh, yes, yes, there will be. I apologize. I was mistaken. Yeah, sorry. I was... Uh, misled and I'm frustrated and uh, disappointed. I apologize. Uh, Mr. Mohamed Zarinov, uh, I have uh, several questions for you. I'd like to ask them later, but now I'd like to give the floor to Dmitry Babushkin, director of uh, the Agency of Social Projects and uh, Youth Initiatives, uh, the Center of Social Networks Monitoring at the Chilevinsk Institute of Professional Education development with the presentation on regional experience in organizing a system of preventing destructive ideologies in the internet space amongst uh, students. Mr. Babushkin, my apologies once again. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, uh, Mr. Babushkin uh, is not present, uh, but I'm, I represent the Center for Monitoring. And so I'll be speaking on his behalf. No. So he couldn't make it. I will represent to you the results of the work of our monitoring center. We'll give you uh, an introduction to um, our center. My name is Maxim Dvainenka. What about our experience? Our monitoring center was created in 2019. And it is based out at the uh, Ministry of Education and Science of the Chilevinsk region, the Institute of uh, professional education development. So this is the website of our institute uh, and our center. And this is where you can download all of the materials that I'm going to present today, including our studies. Speaking about uh, some of the key areas of our work, uh, this includes uh, comprehensive monitoring of the virtual space, analytical research, methodological and consulting activities, and educational work with the students and participants of the educational states. Why these three areas were chosen? Our function that we have given to us by the Ministry of Education of the Chilevinsk region uh, presupposes that we do not just analyze what's going on in the virtual world, but also develop measures to prevent negative patterns of behavior amongst the younger people based on our study of virtual trends. And indeed, they are quite sweeping and captivating to the younger people. So speaking about the first area of work, it's uh, virtual space monitoring. You can see on this slide some uh, software resources that we use that were definitely used. It's Brand Analytics and Target Hunter. They allow us to analyze markers. These are the center's own uh, proprietary methodology. We look at behavior markers that are present in the younger people. That indicates their engagement and uh, sympathy for a certain uh, disruptive ideology. As for monitoring that we do, this uh, Software system is far from being perfect. There is room for improvement. And the key mechanism, as I've seen from previous presentations, is manual monitoring. When you do things on, on your own, uh, trying to understand where the trend is coming from. Speaking about uh, uh, study work and the consulting work, this is the work that goes hand in hand with the sociological, sociological research and studies. And we need to understand the target audience we work with. And we need to uh, offer them counter narratives. And uh, we haven't been in, around for too long, but over these years, we have uh, conducted a number of uh, studies in the field of uh, developing instruments of analysis uh, via virtual space to cover the most respondents. We studied the media literacy of the professors because they are 
in the first line of contact with these students and other participants of the educational process, such as parents. And based on that, we identified key difficulties and challenges that they may have, things they don't understand. Our study has indicated that prevention of extremism in uh, educational facilities, in, in the general sense of the word, is uh, done really well in our region, but all other forms of other negative uh, uh, phenomena, school shooting, uh, near criminal cultures or subcultures and ideology of AUE, they, they basically have no clue, those who do this, how to deal with these negative trends. And in 2021, we did a screen of uh, professors' readiness for preventive activities. Uh, uh, following uh, our monitoring we've done, trying to understand in what areas they are ready to work based on the methodology of the center's own design. It shows us some weaknesses that exist in a given educational organization and the methodological support they need to address the gaps. Also in 2021, in the spring of 2021, we did a study of virtual practices of uh, the younger people of our region across various cities and the municipal districts. We looked at the media literacy of the youngsters. And I'm talking about uh, such things as uh, to what uh, level they have critical reasoning developed in them, to what extent they're ready to participate themselves in uh, leading preventive work amongst their peers and what uh, communication channels do young people prefer and find interesting as for the analytical and the research work that they do you can look at the qr codes on this slide you can um, scan them and uh, this would take you to the methodology that we use you dear colleagues can take advantage of this see what the markers are for negative uh, trends of behavior that would characterize one's engagement in online activities. That includes disruptive and destructive uh, communities. If there is a need, I will be able to share this presentation with the organizers. Now, outreach activities, educational work, enlightenment work, is focused on three target audiences, students, uh, including school students, to a lesser degree, university students, and uh, we do a targeted work with uh, uh, tertiary education and secondary education, such as vocational schools. We do media security, 74, you will find uh, this website if you put it in the search. We organize contests, regional contests, that bring around many participants, such as the World Without Fear. We do preventive work by engaging students in uh, exposing themselves to preventive materials. And you become more inventive or, and engaged if uh, you are exposed to those, such materials to, together with your parents. We conduct uh, teacher parent meetings to consult parents. Why is this needed? The parents community are the people who, strangely enough, are less prepared for the media literacy of their children. This may sound like a paradox, but that's the fact. What does this manifest itself in? This means that any markers of a social negative phenomenon, let's say someone uh, sees on one's webpage that they are uh, displaying suicidal markers or commitment and sympathy to uh, disruptive uh, groups. And so their first response would be delete this, get out of there. But this may uh, lead to effects uh, 
when you can actually effectively interfere as parents or as an education institution to take preventive measures. And of course, uh, we work with professors. Uh, this includes comprehensive workshops, cyber labs on media security, and the links are going to be provided further. And so this requires interagency cooperation. It's very important, especially in the region, but also across the nation. We cannot uh, prevent without this, and we realize this. And we interact with uh, government agencies, provide them with uh, analytical reports and recommendations based on the trends that we observe in a given region that are dominating and material by explaining to them that uh, the game of a squid is not always about radicalism. That's the name of the TV series. It's just one of the youth trends. And of course, we work with the law enforcement, sending them uh, research results. Uh, and as part of our monitoring activities, we find uh, destructive links and we send them to Russian communication surveillance service to block them. And we have a hotline on cybersecurity. The link is uh, in the uh, bottom right corner. There's a resource center. And this is where we have uh, some of our programs on how to do monitoring. And if uh, there are questions, you could always write a hotline. The, what makes our hotline special is that if uh, you find a negative phenomenon socially and uh, you need to make it public, you can do this um, anonymously. This opportunity is provided to whistleblowers. And of course, um, when we work with the youths, we work through the Media and Security 74 regional platform, which I have already uh, alluded to. You can put it in uh, the search bar of a search engine to see what we do. And this includes various informal methods of training. And of course, um, I would like to brag a little bit this year. We had two major contests that we conducted that we used as a tool of counter-narrative. Uh, it's a case uh, championship on cyber socialization. Describing and discussing the various challenges of the cyberspace that could contribute to one's engagement in extremist and destructive communities because of the lack of critical reasoning. And so people had to resolve cases and uh, uh, learn through that. Another important project is a contest of uh, social advertising, World Without Fear. It brought together lots of participants and competitors this year. And the clips that we got, the materials we received um, are well done and we're using them, despite the fact that they are made by non-professionals because they indicate the engagement of the younger people in uh, uh, preventive work, indicating that the younger people are not in agreement with this destructive, uh, world, destructive field. So that's a few words about uh, the work that we do at our Center for Social Networks Monitoring, and you can find further details at the link of the Monitoring Center, and that includes our social sociological surveys and our analytical materials. And if you have any other questions, I'll be happy to take them. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Maxim, for your very interesting intervention. Dear colleagues, all of the speakers have already spoken. According to the time uh, schedule, we have about five minutes for a discussion. Do participants have any questions for the uh, speakers may I ask a question, uh, Professor Tatiana Valchenska. I really liked the other two presentations. I'm sure that we have things to exchange, to exchange our experience, Maxim and Ilshat. A question for you, Ilshat. You have a great collection of uh, posters. I was taking photos of uh, screenshots. How can they be used in Russia effectively, for example? 
could they be and well, first of all can they be made by professional artists who create multimedia products or they can uh, be used as a basis by well-trained in, in individuals at schools and make their own products based on that what do you think thank you very much for your question we can hear you real well the answer is this this has to be a joint effort there are not that many professionals and they are busy professional artists and uh, comics artists they have a contract with uh, a publishing house for example and as such they develop these materials as part of certain grants or contests they are not doing this on a permanent basis but when they do this they come up with really excellent results but there's also a need for content and uh, without non-profits and NGOs, the help of municipal municipal authorities and uh, government agencies, we are not going to be able to invite non-professionals, amateurs. And if we do that, we will be able to find great performers who may not have been uh, discovered as uh, true talents before. What's good about the way they do it in the West and this has only been done here in the uh, last several years, although over there they've been doing it over several decades. We don't have this comics culture. And they have a great deal of uh, artists that can produce high quality posters, strips. And we have several uh, publishing houses, such as Bubble, for example, and a few others that are involved in comics. And they are trying to gather all these artists together and in addition to producing these uh, entertaining materials, could be used uh, for producing these uh, promotion materials, uh, agitation materials. How should I put it? And uh, the answer is in ensuring that there is proper interaction between the professionals and amateurs. And um, it is okay to copy. If you have a sample you can copy off, it is easier for schools to use this analogy to produce something of their own in a school, at a university, in a region, to fabricate adequate materials and order something similar from local talents and contractors. And that will facilitate things, make them easier, and at the same time, we we'll saturate this environment with the necessary materials and uh, could have a positive effect on education of children. So whenever you have this, you know, we do this. This is something that is well received and perceived, especially when it comes to developing critical reasoning skills. And uh, when you work with the internet, imagery, imagery is very good and very effective, especially when you use a particular um, character throughout several different types of materials. Or it could be a children's comics book or posters. Thank you very much. Mr. Mohamed Zaripov, for your substantive answer. Unfortunately, the time that we've been given for our masterclass is up. Can actually the non-professionals do that on their own, colleagues? You have to understand that uh, there is a, a fine uh, border between advertisement and uh, prevention and sometimes uh, actually what seems to be a preventive measure is uh, portrayed as uh, an advertisement thank you so much colleagues unfortunately we have run out of our time but our Today's scientific forum is not over yet, and, and that would like to pass the floor to the director of this event, Mr. Engel. Valeria, thank you so much for the time that you dedicated to us. <laughs> thank you so much, Mr. Abovian. And we start our 
final roundtable, which has to finalize our discussion. It was announced as a uh, roundtable of Rutgers University, but I don't think that the discussion was so much